Hi, it's Tim here from Scribe. A big welcome to all the clerks and counsellors who are watching this video. It's uh, it's great to be here and I really look forward to running through some insights we've seen by working with our 450 plus councils. There's uh, certain things certain councils do that mean they have a huge impact in their community. And today I just want to share with you some of those things, some of those techniques, some of those activities that means they uh, make a really big impact, which I guess for most, most counsellors and clerks is the reason they join. So just first of all, I just want you to think about, ask you a question, what's the hardest part for you when running your council? So maybe as a clerk or as a counsellor, what's the hardest, hardest thing that you have? And so we've asked the same question to our customers and the big answers that come back are lack of time, no time. There's so many things to do. They just have no time. Time is is running out, which means they're overwhelmed. And overwhelmed means that they just have so many projects to sort out, so many things to answer, so many emails to do. It just feels like the world's coming down on top of them. This is especially for the clerks where uh, things change and, and systems change, people change, and they just get this huge workload, which is really hard to to overcome. And that leads to things like tension and uh, conflict which then increases the problems you know, when you're overwhelmed and then you've got tension and conflict as you know stress levels go up and uh, this yeah, causes more problems other uh, things we've heard are problems of budget constraints where you've got great ideas for projects but actually it's just finding the budget to get these projects off the ground which then also leads to not making an impact. Actually, more, I say more correctly, not making the impact you want to. So a lot of clerks and councillors they join the council and they they work for the councils because the, the they want to make a huge impact to the local community. They they volunteered their time and um, they want to make this impact. So there's some of the sort of the problems we've seen, and in this video I want to kind of address some techniques, some solutions to make those problems less, which means you can move on and make that local impact. And uh, we've seen it across so many different councils, the ones who've gone through it and get their, get their processes and systems in place, their projects can bloom and, and their town or their parish can absolutely transform. So across the landscape of councils, we can actually map out the impact they have and the number of councils that have that impact. And by doing that, we can then see the attributes of the ones that have the most impact. And as you'd expect, the kind of distribution is this normal distribution where we've got a small number of councils making a high impact, a small amount of councils making not much impact, and quite a lot of councils making some impact in the middle here. So let's break these down in different segments so we can see how those work. So this bottom segment, okay, who are low impact is here. This is the low impact segment. And these might be councils who are kind of stuck. Things haven't changed for ages. Things have always been the same way. It's the same way. There's no new projects going on. The, the the mindset is that things will always stay the same. There's no way of changing things. The next section up, with the bulk of council sit. It's here. It's kind of mid zone. And this is kind of the medium impact. Just whilst I remember, let's, let's, this zone here, let's call this the sleepy, sleepy town zone. Next town, next section up, this, these councils are actually getting somewhere. They're getting some impact, but they know things to be better. And they're kind of maybe drifting, so let's call this drift town. As we go through these different segments, we get to this area here where things are going better. Still quite a few councils there, but 
and let's call this one progress time. And then there's the ones, the big ones that you know, maybe you'll cancel yourself, maybe it's ones you've read about or you know in your local area who are in this top zone. If things, projects seem to be going faster, they seem to be able to find budget where the towns can't. And you can see locally um, they're making an impact. Let's call this impact town. Right, so then we look at these different segments and we can we can see here we've got high impact. So you can have a think about where you think your town council sits, and most are going to be sitting here. So let's say there's there's one sitting here. You've kind of scored yourself. You think we're we're just about here, or maybe you're you're here. And the good news is, it's possible for me to move up from here to here, and from here into making an impact. And I'm going to share a few things with you in a minute of what make that how to do that. But actually, right at this top zone, there's a zone we haven't discussed, and this is where this is the, the very creme de la creme sit. Here. This is where the local community is just powering forward. It's called the magnetic zone. Magnetic town. So, of course, everybody wants to be here. And actually, there's no reason why we can't get there. And we've analyzed the attributes of the top performing councils. And we can see that if the things that make the difference to make this, this route here, and it comes down to some quite simple things that most councils can implement. So number one, let's say of systems. Having systems means the council can run more from the system than by the people. Part of the systems is having process. This is the way we do things, and you improve the process rather than trying to recreate the process all the time. Number three, transparency. So the transparency comes through a good process and a good system, which then leads to openness, which then leads to trust. And with trust, some of the problems we talked about right at the start disappear. So the conflict is gone. And if the conflict is gone, then we can move on to professionalism. And if we wrap all these up into one concept, we can actually call this leadership. And so by going through this, getting your systems right, putting processes in flight, making transparency, openness, trust, each professionalism, and we can do that through leadership. And then it's possible to move all the way up, access new budgets, make more impact projects, get rid of conflict. However, we are facing a crisis. And it's interesting to look at the current crisis, which is COVID, and how we can reframe the, our thinking within a crisis so we can always progress. Now, this is kind of based on COVID, but any crisis is the same. The same pattern happens and the same, the same route takes place. So. This is where we're at, at the moment in this crisis at the start. And we know the crisis is going to go on and on and on and on. But we also know at some point in the future, the crisis will actually be over here. It will be over and the sun will shine again and we'll feel better. And so we we're here at the start and we know in the end it will be it will be over. We just don't know how long that will take with any crisis. It could be six months, one year, two years, we just don't know. But we do know at some point in the future, there'll be a point where we can actually, we can see 
the end of the crisis, we can actually think, okay, we're going to get through this. I can see how this is going to end. And we can see the end of the crisis. And then it becomes, then, then the, the pressure comes off. However, we're not there at this stage. We're right here, right at the start. And so if we think about it this way, I think we're actually in the end, we'll, at one point we'll be able to see how things are going to work out. We know in the future things will get better. We then at the start, we can, we can take different trajectories. Now, this comes down to sort of the inbuilt fight or flight mode within people. And when there's a real crisis, the first thing that most humans do is they run away. They go into, into flight mode. And that is absolutely normal. The problem with doing that is as your time goes on, there's no impact. It's just running away, which then leads to things like stress. In the future, as well as stress now, and there's team change, all sorts. Another way of approaching a crisis is you say, okay, I know we're in a crisis, but I'm going to try and fix things. And then things will get stressful and we'll run away. And we'll fix things and then run away. This kind of flip flop. And that works. And actually, you do get through it, but you end up at the same place you started. It's better than being the total flight mode with no impact, you end up where you started. But there is a third way. This is the way of taking a step back and accepting short term there will be problems, but take strategic steps forward. And what happens here is slowly things get better. We're kind of here, we're at the same level as a sort of one of the flip flops. But actually by carrying on our plan, we end up at that end zone and some are fantastic. Again, this is the impact zone. And this is where, by taking a step back today in a crisis, we can still end up there. We can learn from it and learn the best things. So in this impact zone, things that help to get onto that path are the same things we talked about before, processes. Problem solving. Transparency. And to get all those things in place, what do we actually need to do to be on this path? We need to say, actually, we need the leadership. Back to the leadership. By making the, the decision that we're going to be on that path. So just to recap that again, it's in this crisis. There's different ways of reacting. We can react in flight mode. Nothing happens, it all goes wrong. We can flip flop, do some things right and some things wrong and we'll end up in the same place. Or we can take a step back and say, okay, we're gonna get through this crisis. It's not gonna be easy, but we're gonna put the things in place that mean we can step back, have the processes, systems, to get to this impact zone and grow through it. And so this is an example with COVID is that um, many town and parish councils are running on old systems, old processes, and through remote working have been forced to, to change, to upgrade their IT, to move things to the cloud, to change their systems. And actually this is kind of a forcing function. And as much as it's painful, once that's gone through and you've got your first process in place, you've got your, you've done your, say your first remote council meeting. Well, once you've done it here, you can do it over here. You can do it forever. Once you set up a new accounting system, which is painful here, well, actually that takes you through and opens up new budgets and new planning and, and so on. So there's a difference. And every council has a choice to, to make if they're going to take the red or the yellow or the green. And sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes you can't say, you know, there's things outside your control. But taking a step back and putting the, the fundamentals in place makes a huge difference. So what can we do today to take our council into the magnetic zone? Well, we can upgrade our systems. We can put in IT systems that are basic, easy to use, that frees up people's times. 
so we can improve our processes, improve our transparency, which means we're open and the trust is there, getting rid of the conflict, and now we're professional. And now we're professional with this leadership, we can work on the strategic projects to move ourselves there. Here at Scribe, we can help with that. We can help you put in your account system, which means that anyone with our support can run your accounts with transparent with an audit trail where you can budget properly, you can see what's going on and you can take away that headache, meaning you can work on your strategic projects in the council. And we would love to help you. So please do get in touch on our website, click on the arrange a demo button or request a demo. And uh, one of our advisors will get on the phone and show you how Scribe works and how it can really impact you and help you get to the magnetic zone.